and ready for welcoming the two finalists. And with me, Richard Eaton, with the pleasure to have him here sharing the comments and sharing his experience. And let me know, introduce our finalists, please. Uh, yeah, for the gold medal final, both archers are from the Ladies U.S. Rio, we are ready to start Rio Wild, and uh, for the uh, Matt, Matt Sullivan. Uh, both are actually from the same area. <laughs> I mean, they know each other. Really? Shoot, shoot local shoots together and stuff. So, uh, came a long way when they could have drove, you know, 20 or 30 minutes and fought against each other. <laughs> it's funny. It's a home match, a thousand of miles away. <laughs> Matt's been in the shoot-off in Vegas a couple times. Uh, shoots a lot of our uh, national outdoor and events. And shooting on target two, also from USA, please welcome, Joe Wilde! A Hoyt shooter against a former Hoyt shooter. And here we have Rio Wild, the compan archer. Yep. Yep. Um, and that was uh, that was a big story for the big weekend. Big story of the weekend and worldwide, correct. Tell me a little bit. Uh, yeah, uh, I'll put it simply real, you know, switch from uh, point to uh, elite and clearly has shot the bow, bow well so far. <laughs> He's in the gold medal match in his first tournament with it, so yes. lots, of different, uh, lots of different uh, people switching bow companies this year, so, which is never, you know, it's never a bad thing. It's cool to see guys move around, keep the sport changing, keep people interested in it, so. It's clear that uh, Rio has been many years a point shooter. For sure had a lot of thinking to make this move. And when he did it, he feels that the, the bow he's shooting now is, is good enough to, to, show, to show how he's good as an archer. Nine. So of course there's competition, more companies coming in the market in the circuit, and any company wants to have the best archers. So for you, top archers is quite good. <laughs> <laughs> companies want you and and try to convince you to shoot with a product. So Rio, for the first time shooting Nine, okay. Elite. How you call it in English? Elite? Yep. Good. We were discussing yesterday with Asian people. It's Elite, it's Elite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so with Elite and... Elite, he went from, uh, went from the west side of the country, Hoyt bows are made there in Utah to uh, East side of the country, elites yes. made in uh, New York. Like I said, Matt and Rio live kind of in the same area and shoot against each other. So they know shoot. each other very yep. well then. Yep, travel. I believe they even traveled here together. So they definitely all know it. All know each other. So. So let's, let's put it this way, Logan convinced Rio to switch the company <laughs> and got a bonus from the company to convince the world ranking number one. <laughs> Sounds like a family business here. <laughs> For sure the winner here is Elite, who got two of very good top archers. And the brother wearing the same t-shirt. So now, I think what they did when they were kids, when... <laughs> When D. Wild was put in the same t-shirt, many years after they keep having the same t-shirt. <laughs> the same brand. We have the of score of talked to him quite a bit about the bows. And he seems to really enjoy shooting, so like I said before. Oh, and just got the scores real. I shot a 30 on the first end and that with a 28, so. Yeah, got the lead. A good start we move in the on to But every company is making such good bows anymore. It's you know it's easy to be competitive with any company. This is always a discussion. It's really important. So much important the bow, so much important the archer. Of course, the combination is a good thing, but when archer shooting consistent and more or less perfect, hey. the bow doesn't matter so much. But when you are not so perfect, the bow makes a huge difference, so especially how well it's tuned. Yep, the tune of the bow, a lot of it more is just, I mean, every bow has its own, I mean, any bow, if you put it on a machine, hey. you shoot really in the same hole every time as long as it's tuned perfectly. So a lot of it just comes down to what bow the the archer prefers. What I've so. seen during uh, 
across all this year is they are much more consistent. They don't break so much anymore. I remember 10 years ago, every competition you see things breaking because it's a big stress what this ball yeah. received. No? And if it's not the extension, it was the side, the scope, something, so much vibration that was affected. And nowadays, these balls resist thousands of arrows and nothing break. Has been a huge okay. evolution in, in the companies have done a great job in making the machine perfect. It was pretty perfect, but much more durable and resistant. They're faster, they're more accurate, but especially they're much more resistant. Ten. We almost one low. It's too quiet in this hall. Let's see a jump during and left. So they're gonna look at it and see if we can't get it called in, but one Even so, here. he'll have at least a one point lead. So. Yeah, was Potter Mateo is telling that maybe it's two. <laughs> <laughs> we have privileged information to make sure that the our spotter, the first spotter, is in the field of play and has yep. a very, very like open this. angle. So sometimes it's not easy to see when the arrow is in front of the line. Yeah, when our nice. second spotter, Mateo, is in a different well, angle well. and can see it a bit better. And a spot in you guys' compound is, is tough. And yes, Mateo was right. He loved when I say he's right. <laughs> it's not all the time, but he loved it. So he's right, and he didn't drop the point. So he still has, uh, real while, still have two points of lead. So like I said sure earlier, even though he wasn't right in the center, all you got to do is touch that line. So it is, uh, looks like he just hugged it enough to get the judge to call in, so. Wow, pretty good shot. Very solid. Mm. You can tell Matt's kind of settled down. He's a little, his first couple shots in the first end were real quick. And it uh, looks like he settled down quite a bit here. Take a little more time to make a good, good clean shot. Ten. Rio's used to this, so he's, Settled in pretty quickly. <laughs> yes, but Still it's interesting, perfect. Rio, when we see him shooting for many years, he's very laid back. He's a bit yep. behind, has the shoulder a bit high. It's very special uh, form. It. Only yep. he is doing this in the circuit. So, and I've talked to him about it quite a bit. One of the ways he looks at how he leans back is uh, if you watch uh, competitive rifle shooters, yeah, um, especially guys who shoot like the biathlon type stuff. Yes. Uh, You'll see them leaning way back to counteract the, the weight of the gun that they shoot. So Rio kind of adopted that for archery, and that helps him when he's shooting, you know, his two pounds of weight out the front end of his stabilizer. He has a lot of weight. That's what I, it, I thought when I saw him. I thought there's a natural reaction with all the weight he put in front. So Rio's always shot a lot of weight on the front end of his bar. So you can see he's still in that same hole low on the second target. And seems it's working like for him, this position like and this weight. <laughs> they gave it to him on the first two first two ends and sure they'll uh, he'll have it on this end too in that middle target so Good. we have Matt with a nine with asterisk waiting to see the confirmation. That second arrow is a third low but from back here looking at our uh, computer screen I would have called it in. <laughs> it looked pretty good. Okay. And we'll see what the, the judge ends up saying there. Either way, Rio being the lead, it's just whether he'll be up by uh, by four or by three. Yes, you were right. Good eyes. Second one, so he's up by, and up by two points. He was both 30. Wow. So, still a close match. Okay, yes. Uh, I was complaining a little bit to the spotter that there was only one asterisk <laughs> and they were looking to me and say, the angle, Juan Carlos, the angle, the position they are is not the ideal, especially in indoor with big shaft and with the lights issues, so they are doing the best. So the good thing is we have judges going to target and making sure that the right score. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so still two points of lead with one with a perfect 90, all 10. So, and other than that first end for Matt, he shot uh, both ends clean and started this off end, or started this end off with a perfect ten. So, when for those that are not so explanatory, shot clean means he has not made one nine. Yep, exactly. <laughs> it's all ten. 
but it only takes one one nine to lose, especially when you're shooting at somebody who hasn't missed any points. So, and this is why we actually decided to keep this scoring format, the cumulative scoring, because you guys compound can go to this perfect shot, this 150 or this 300. And this is something that people want to see. People want to see how you make a perfect score, how you can be perfect. Uh, both of them slipped up on their second arrow. Talking there. about, <laughs> talk, what do you say? <laughs> talk <laughs> about it and Sounds just like happened the opposite. <laughs> Sorry, Rio, it was not my intention. <laughs> Nine. Rio still has an opportunity to go up by three. Huh? Go up by three. Yep. If he can play a ten on target here, which he does. And he got it. Ten. You don't give too much opportunity to Rio. <laughs> <laughs> he, used, he has a tendency to take them, <laughs> to take advantage of this opportunity and a lead of three points. If it's confirmed, it's a comfortable lead for the last three arrows. The, the wild, wild family, a real archery family. Talk talk about about the, yes. Talking about Rio and everybody switching bows, Matt's still shooting for Hoyt, but he, uh, instead of shooting like their uh, podium series, but their longer axle axle target bows, uh, he went to a shorter one this year with more parallel style limbs. Seems to enjoy it, so he's shooting a totally different bow now, too. That's another part. You can have the same brand, but you have a different configuration, different shape, different cams, and that's make the bow behave different. But yes, it's obvious to see that it's quite shorter yep. compared to the elite one. Shorter, and uh, his limbs go well beyond parallel, actually curl in a little bit, even. You're so right, it's completely curling in. And which I guess changed completely the feeling. Yep, instead of the bow kind of jumping forward, it'll, uh, it has a lot less hand shock, so it's almost like shooting a hunting bow. Okay. Same type of configuration as that, and so. Both of them with tens on the first arrow here. Sullivan, Nine. with an impossible mission to come back. Depends much more on Rio than on him. And Ooh. <laughs> very liner. Just catching the line, which yeah. fortunately is all you need to do to get that uh, get that higher score. And, and that finishes with a good arrow and all Rio needs to win is a seven. And if you've seen that from anybody here it would be quite surprising. And so you got it. Last end was more or less expected. First tournament with a new bow and he wins. <laughs> yes, it's a, it's a good start for, for Rio Wild with his new bow, Elite, and celebrate their victory. Yep. I don't think Matt will be too disappointed with the silver medal either. So I know he uh, shot much better here than he did last year. Now we have the option Some issues last year and didn't even qualify. And now this year he was in the gold medal match. So Wow. Both guys still shot very well. Yes. Goes to Rio Wilde from USA. And the silver medal goes to nice. Matt Sullivan. Nice match. Not from as excited USA. as the bronze medal match. But clear that Rio was very consistent, has been leading the competition from arrow number one since the start.